The return Atlantic crossing was a rough one, with the ocean bearing its teeth from saint pierre et miquelon the last land before Brest, as the depression became a hurricane. At its height, the mainly amateur crew had to deal with seven-metre waves, with the reconstructed 18th-century frigate hitting speeds of over 13 knots, more than 24 kilometres an hour for the 1,200-tonne craft. We've had a hurricane warning, so there'll be no joking around. We can't take this lightly. The night of August the 6th was hardly believable. For several hours we made over 12 knots, hitting over 13 several times. We'd never seen the ship perform like that before. Hermione left France on April the 13th, stopping in the Canary Islands before crossing the Atlantic to America. On an 18-stop tour, the replica ship reminded Americans of the support embodied by Lafayette to the nascent American Revolution. French support was crucial to the birth of the USA. One of the highlights was sailing under the friendly gaze of the Statue of Liberty, another French gift in New York, where Hermione had a place of honor in a 4th of July regatta to celebrate Independence Day. The most moving moment of the voyage was when we sailed into Yorktown Harbor in Virginia, where the scale of the Americans' welcome was surprising. This continued in every city we visited. People were visibly touched by our visits and very interested in what we'd done. The fact that we'd rebuilt the ship to revive the memory of Lafayette and this period of close cooperation with the states to help them with their independence. The project took 17 years and 20 million euros, but judging from the reception and interest generated, it looks like money well spent. It doesn't end here either, as Hermione will become a floating museum and may return to the sea for cadet training.